Hello, our most valid student. My name is Confident. Welcome to the second part of our lesson on HIT. And this is Engineering Science N2. As I said, uh, I'm going to do a two part lesson. I will encourage you, if this is the first time coming in contact with this channel, um, to subscribe to our channel. Or alternatively, you can um, um, press the notification bell that can actually um, give you a notification every time there is a new video. You can also share this channel to your friends and your colleagues and you can leave a comment if ever you want us to leave a comment below. And also guys, I would like to appreciate those who always are active on this uh, channel. Uh, they leave quite a number of good comments. Sometimes it is alternative ways of approaching it. Sometimes they give me other definitions which are supposed to be the, the more suitable or more correct definitions and it is appreciated. And if you can go through those comments, you can actually get more uh, ideas from what other guys are thinking also if you've got something that you want us to look into don't forget to leave us a comment below now let's look at this question seven as i said initially um this focus here is on hit and i've got two questions that i want to go through this is a complete guide under engineering science and two we have looked at the first question which is 7.1 in the previous uh lesson where it says uh you need to define specific heat capacity now the moment they say specific is the keyword specific heat capacity this is the amount of i'll write it in brief this is the amount of heat energy that is required to raise the temperature of one kilogram uh, I wanted to say this is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a specific substance by a temperature. Okay, this is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature. We've already said the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. So this is what they mean by specific uh, heat capacity or by one Kelvin in this case. But um, as I said, we have looked at this definition quite, um, I think, in two or three activities. So it is very, very, very important for you to always um, know that definition. What is important also is the calculations. It says the following data refers to aluminum rod. It's aluminum rod. And what we have, they are saying, uh, the length of the aluminum is 2 meters in length, being heated by burning coal. So in this case, coal is our other substance. So it says the data refers to an aluminum rod 2 meters in length being heated by burning coal. So they give us the information here to say initial temperature of the rod is that. The mass of coal bent is that. The percentage of heat transfer to the rod is that, and then the mass of the rod is that. Now, we need to calculate a few things here from the information that they have given, and they want us to calculate. So, if I can bring it here to say number one, it's 7.2.1, that's what we're looking at. It says, calculate the following, the amount of heat energy released by coal. So, now, let's look at the information that we were given for coal. They told us that for coal and then the length l is equal to two meters sorry that's not for coal that's the sorry that's the road i'm talking about coal the information given here for coal is that um the mass of coal being bent the m is equal to 0 0.75 kg the units are very important and then percentage transfer to the heat is that but there is information that you are not given here which you will find in the formula sheet or in the data sheet so let's go to the data and see what information are we given concerning coal so now if you look at this uh data you will see something concerning coal if i can come here i think i've used this again in the previous lesson let's look at coal what we're given we are given the heat value of coal, as you can see that, is 30 megajoules per kilogram. 
that is very important so now if we can use that because we're given the heat failure of coal which is hv they say hv is 30 megajoules per kilo so now there is a formula that connects m and, and hv which says q is equal to mass times hv do you see that is the mass times the heat value which is equal to the mass of coal which is 0 0.75 times the heat value which is 30 megajoules per kg i'm just uh, including those units let me just put kilojoule kilograms there and then if i do that just to multiply you don't need to put the units per se but just i'm, I'm, I'm including the units because what happens is it's very important for you to know that you are dealing uh in this case with megajoules so if i can multiply 0 0.75 times 30 the answer that i'm getting i'm getting 22.5 so i've got 22.5 remember the answer now the kilograms and the kilograms will cancel what will be left q is measured in joules but in this case we are looking at q being uh, 22.5 uh, megajoules now don't forget megajoules is same as saying 22.5 times 10 to the power 6 joules that's what it simple means so that is the first part of this answer that we're getting so we if i can write it here to say it's 22.5 mj so that is that part guys let us look at the next one we are looking if i can erase this part we are then looking at the next question 7.2.2 which says the heat value transferred so want to look at i mean the heat energy that is transferred to the rod now what do we know about the rod the first thing that we are told in this case um, about the rod is that uh, the initial temperature of the rod is 25 degrees and then the percentage heat transferred that's the keyword there percentage heat transferred to the rod is 40 percent so here now they're saying what is the heat transferred to the rod they gave us in terms of percentage now we want to calculate it in terms of the actual heat so you simply say 40 okay let's write that in words to say heat transferred heat transferred uh, sorry about that uh, heat transferred is equal to 40 percent which is 40 over a hundred times the heat which was um bent from the coal which is 22.5 remember the coal they're saying the percentage percentage of heat transferred to the rod which means when the coal is being bent only 40 percent goes into the rod so if you can find that using in this case the calculator to say what is 22.5 uh percent 22.5 I mean 40 percent of 22.5 so it will be 40 over 100 times 22.5 and then it will give us 9 in this case don't forget the units you are still dealing with megajoules so it's 9 megajoules that is the heat that is transferred in this case all right so far so good continue the question this is too much these are just basic uh questions in a way so that you can in a um in a way follow up they build one question to the other to the other so now let us look at question 7.2.3 now it says the final temperature of the road so that's what they want now to find the final temperature now for us to be able to find um, the final temperature they there are formulas that are linking uh the temperature as well as q let me just bring in the common formula that we used that is q is equal to mc uh, delta t which means it's mass times specific heat capacity of uh, the substance as well as change in temperature so if i write that part to say q is equal to m times c times change in t now the question says find the final temperature of the rod so my q here remember the q is the one that i got in the previous answer whereby 
it is the amount of heat that was transferred into the rod so 9 in this case is equal to m if we can look did they give us the mass of the rod yes they gave us the mass of the rod they told us the mass of the rod is 10 kilograms so it's 10 times the specific heat capacity of the rod and in this case we're dealing with aluminium as you can see it's very important to know what you're dealing with this is an aluminium rod if you got your data you will see that there is information given on the specific heat capacity of aluminium and this is the one which is 900 joules per kilogram degrees celsius so if i look at if i take that value um, to use it will be 900 times change in temperature because at the moment uh, i'm looking just for change in temperature now look i just used nine in this case but don't forget nine the units for nine was in megajoules so i need either to convert everything divide everything by 10 to the power 6 or multiply 9 by 10 to the power 6 so the easier one is for me to multiply 9 times 10 to the power 6 because if i just use 9 it will be wrong reading because i must convert 9 to joules remember which is 9 times 10 to the power 6 that is when i can be able then to divide both sides by 10 times 900 even here i divide by 10 times 900 i think you can see what uh, uh, is happening here if i can do that i will have my change in temperature so it will be in this case um, if i take my calculator uh, it will be 9 times 10 to the power 6 over 10 times 900 and the answer that i'm getting is 1000 so i'm getting here 1000 but what i'm looking at is the change in temperature which is 1000 degrees celsius is the change in temperature this is not the final answer the question says we need to find the final temperature of the rod we are given the initial temperature now if we look at this change in temperature is equal to t final minus t initial so now change in temperature which is a thousand is equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature which was uh, 25 so if you want to find the final temperature you have to take negative 25 to the other side it will be at 1000 plus 25 is equal to t final which is 1025 degrees celsius is equal to the final temperature which is in this case tf so that is one zero two five don't forget units are very very important if you don't write units they're going to penalize you let us move on the next question says um the final length of the road now they have changed the tense they are talking about the length of the road again if you go to the uh, our data there is information that talks about the length now we are dealing with aluminium and we're looking at the linear coefficient of expansion for aluminium so you see that value it is 0, 0,000023 000 so there are four zeros after the comma so remember that value that is um in this case our we're looking at aluminium just to verify that we're dealing with aluminium yes so that part the linear coefficient of expansion is 0 comma 1 2 3 4 23 now let's look at the formula that connects that we have a formula that connects that to say here there is the formula change in length is initial length times the linear coefficient of expansion times the change in temperature so if i can write that to say here change in length is equal to initial length times the linear coefficient of expansion times the change in temperature so now the question is the final length of the road for now i have to find the change in length which is the initial length and they did give us the initial length it says a road uh, in length there is two meters so that is our initial length so I will have there two 
times the coefficient, linear coefficient of expansion, and 2, 3, 4, 23. We're dealing with meters times, because 2 is in meters, change in temperature. In this case, we did find our change in temperature. Remember, when you looked at change in temperature, when we were calculating here, we found that the change in T was equal to 1000 degrees Celsius. So you multiply that by 1000. So that's how you multiply that. And then when you simplify that, what you're going to have, it will be, uh, if you use a calculator in this case, if I can just grab my calculator, it will be 2 times 0, 0,123423, that's 4, times 1. If you say equal to, you can see that I'm getting 0, 0.046. So change in length is equal to 0, 0.046. This is in meters. I'm dealing with meters. Now the question said find the final length. So you go again to your formulas. Look at the next formula. It is the one that is going to give us the final length, which says LF is equal to initial LF for final length is L0 for initial length plus or minus change in L. So if I use that, it will be uh, LF is equal to L0 plus or minus change in length. But now, whenever you are talking about heat being added, you look at the final temperature. We said the final temperature was, this was our TF. You can see that TF is higher than our initial temperature which is 23 degrees so which means we moved from 23 to 1025 which means this road if it was this was the length we expect the length to be longer because of that coefficient of linear expansion we expect remember when you apply heat energy on a road or on a substance it increases in length so which means when the length is going to increase, what you're going to use here, you're going to use plus. So the answer, therefore, will become L0 plus change length, which is equal to initial length of the rod. Remember, we said the L0 was 2. So in this case, it is 2 plus 0, 0,046. And the answer will be equal to 2, 046 uh, meters. That is the final length. LF. So that is this, uh, guys. So for you to be able to do those calculations, that's how you approach them. And in this case, this was now 10 marks. Now, the last question, which is 7.3, says state one advantage of steam. Now, there are many advantages of steam. Sometimes they can say state two, but the first one, number one, is that it is cheap to use. There are many of them, but simple one, it is cheap. Number two, it is renewable. Now, the moment that it is renewable, you can say it is clean uh, energy or clean to the environment. So it is cheap to use, it is renewable, it is clean to the environment. All these are the advantages of using steam. So in all that, you will be given uh, 11 marks. Now, I think, guys, you can hear the noise in the background. Today, it's raining where I am and uh, apologies for the sound that you you'll be affected by the rain in this case but i just want to continue and finish up the last question as i said i wanted to bring this to you guys but because of rain you will get some background noise let's continue to seven point another question here it's question seven again you find the hit on question seven Define the specific heat capacity. I'm not going to do that. You can refer to the previous one, but the main thing there is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree Celsius. Now, 7.2 is my interest. It says a boiler uses 50 kilogram of coal per hour. Very important information there. 50 kilogram. So you write it like this. 50 kilogram per hour. That is how this boiler is using. Calculate the following, 7.2.1, the energy used per hour. So now when you're calculating the energy, I think you've seen the formulas that we use for energy. It's Q is M times 
specific heat capacity times change in temperature. This is the formula you are given, but there are some two formulas you are not given, whereby it says Q is equal to M times CV, where CV stands for calorific value, or there is another formula that says Q is M times HV. This is the common formula whenever you are dealing with fuels, where HV stands for heat value. Now, you will be given this information, the heat value of the substance that they are dealing with. In this case, they are dealing with coal. So if you go backwards, you will see that we have, we did it previously, we have the heat value of coal, which is 30 megajoules per kilogram. Like that. So now if the question then says, calculate the energy used per hour, so you've got Q is equal to M times heat value of coal, which is equal to our m is 50 times the heat value i think you saw is 30 and then what do i get 30 times i mean 50 times 30 in this case if i use my calculator i think it's 1500 50 times 30 is equal to 1500 so it will be 1500 now pay attention on how i'm going to write my answer is 1500 remember i'm dealing with heat so and it was in megajoules so it's megajoules per hour don't forget that because they say it per hour so it's very important to represent your answer properly 7.2.2 it says the power output of the boiler if the efficiency of the boiler is 100 percent again we go to our formulas and we look at the formulas that connect us with power and if you if i use this formula to say power you can see that power is q over t where t is time in this case so if i go in here to say 7.2 there is p is equal to q over t now we are given in this case i need to express everything back to its uh, si units remember the q in this case is the one that we have from the top which is 1500 megajoules so you write it as 1500 now you change it back to joules which is times 10 to the power of 6 divided by now they say per hour so an hour is 60 minutes times 60 seconds because time is measured in seconds when you do that that's how you change everything to the si unit of power remember si unit of power is joules per second or watts the actual uh right way is to say watts but you must convert everything into its units so this is 1500 times 10 to the power of 6 and then remember i'm dividing by 60 times 60 this is changing uh an hour to seconds which is 41 66646 it's 416,666 comma 667 so it will be 416 if i write it uh, in this case properly it's 416666,67 remember power is measured in watts or you can use joules per second they will still give you uh, correct marks because time is measured in seconds and q is measured in joules and then says seven point 2.3 says the mass of water that can be heated i can just remove that part so that you can see it says the mass of water that can be heated from 20 degrees to 100 degrees if the efficiency of the boiler is 100 percent so now they want to find the mass of the water that can be heated i need a little bit of space here if i can work that one out remember there is as i said the formulas that link m these are the formulas that are linking M, which is Q. It is Q, H, V, Q, C, V. But in this case, we want Q with M, C, change in T. Why? Because you will see that we have that information. So if I write that formula, Q is equal to M times C times change in T. Why did I use that information? Take a look. It says the mass of water. So now we're dealing with water which we know its specific heat capacity that can be heated from 20 degrees to 100 degrees now 
we can see there is a change in temperature. Are you seeing that? So, and then at the same time, they are saying the boiler is 100% efficient. We also have our initial Q from the question, which was 1,500. So if you say 1,500, remember, change it back to the SI units. You say times 10 to the power 6, which is now in joules, is equal to M, which is the mass, which will be in kilogram, times we go and find the specific heat capacity of water. And in this case, the it is, is 4187. If I use that value, it's 4187. I think that times change in temperature. It's up to you how you want to do the change in temperature. You can actually say on a side note T. You can write it like this to say change in temperature is equal to T final minus T initial. So you can actually put it there to say T final in this case. Our final temperature, they say it from 20 to 100 so our final is the bigger one which is 100 minus our initial which is 20 so it's up to you to write here 100 minus 20 in brackets or you can choose actually to remove that and you calculate what is 100 minus 20 so that you can have 80 degrees celsius but don't lose this information you must also include it in your working so that they will see where you got the 80 degrees celsius I don't need to include the units. Now, when I've done that, remember, I'm only interested in finding the mass. That's why mathematics is important in this case. You don't need to multiply. You can multiply 4187 times 80, but it's not a must. You can actually divide by what you don't want. Remember, you want to remain with M. You can divide by that 4187 times 80. What you do on the left, you do on the right, 4187 times times 80 let the calculator do the job and it will give you the answer straight away so if i use that in this case it will be um 1500 times 10 to the power 6 over 4187 times 80 you can see the answer is 44,478,15 to two decimal places. So it's 44,78,15. That is 44,78,15. And remember, I'm looking at M for mass, and it is measured in kilograms, which is my M. So you can conclude and say, therefore, the mass of water of water is equal to and then you write those that figure them. so that is how you can find that i hope this makes sense let's look at 7.3 which is the last question in this part and then we call it um a, a day 7.3 says a copper a copper pass length at 20 degrees see copper pass length so this copper is very important to know we are dealing with copper because copper has information such as the specific heat capacity, such as the coefficient of expansion. So every time they mention the name of the, the substance, mark that because it is very important for what you'll be answering. So we've got copper here, and then the pass length at, so the first temperature they give you becomes your T initial, that is the starting temperature. So it's a copper pass length at 20 degrees is found to be 10 meters long. So, which means also this is our initial length. So, when it is initial temperature, it is the initial length. The bar is then heated up. So, they are heating it up to 200 degrees. So, if this was T initial, this it becomes our T final. Automatically, it tells you that we can find our change in T, which is T final minus T initial, which is equal to 200 minus 20 and what is 200 minus 20 you will find that you already know just simple information from what they have given with before answering you can see that in this case let me write it here it's 180 degrees celsius you already know the change in temperature 
I think that so this is the information that you can actually use without even looking at the question but let's look at the question it says we need to calculate the change in length so they want delta L of the copper bar in millimeters it's very important for you to give into the actual units so now we are interested in looking at the change in length now we have formulas that deal with the change in length as we said these are the formulas i'm going to write both of them uh the change in length with the specific um which is the uh, not the specific capacity actually the coefficient of linear expansion as well as the second formula so if i can write those two formulas i will have a uh, change in length is equal to initial length times this uh, coefficient of specific uh, of uh, of expansion times the change in temperature that's the first part again the final length is equal to the initial length plus or minus change in length so these formulas are the ones that will be enabling you to calculate what they need let's look at the information you're given there is no way they can just give you t1 they can give you l0 they can give you t2 and they can tell you the name of the item without being able to find the change in length so let's find the change in length which is change in length is equal to initial length which is 10 we are dealing with meters so let's do everything in meters and then we're going to change the answer into millimeters so it's 10 times now specific heat capacity i mean the coefficient of linear expansion of copper remember we're dealing with copper so if i look at the coefficient of linear expansion of copper is this one see that which is 0 comma four zeros and one seven so zero comma with four zeros and one seven so if i write it like that it would be zero comma zero comma four zeros after the decimal and then one seven that's what i have times the next one is change in temperature this is where you we say it, our change in temperature it's up to you how you want to write it you can say simple times 180 but you need to include this information you put it down there to say what is the change in temperature you write it until you get 180 degrees so you don't want to just state it they need you to show your working so if you do that you are going then to calculate that to say 10 times 0 comma 1 2 3 4 1 7 times 180 it gives me in this case 0 comma 0 306 so i've got 0 comma 0 306 uh let me just do it again i think i missed something there i think it was 0 comma 0 0 i say 10 times 0 comma 1 2 3 4 1 7 times 180 and if i press that it's 0 comma 0 3 0 6 okay so it's 0 comma 0 3 0 6 now if i was working with meters from here means my final answer also is in meters but the question says in millimeters so change in length is equal to 0 comma 0 3 0 6 then you multiply that by a thousand that is the one then that will convert your uh, 0306 times a thousand. We are converting it now. It will be 30,6 millimeters. 30,6. In this case, it is in millimeters. So that is how you can use um, this to find um the final answer in that case so as i said guys the information on heat is not really complicated you just need to know your formulas when to use what and one formula i think i noted from you that is not given in the formulas is the one for q being q if they give you a uh, combustible substance or fuel like coal like wood you must remember to say 
in this case like fuel sometimes they give you petrol it is uh, use the formula mass times heat value in which you you are given q is equal to m c change in t in this case you will be knowing the specific heat capacity of that substance but if you're not given that always rely on the formula or oh, sometimes they can give you information with caloric carol calorific value which is m times cv where cv is the carolific, carolific car, from calories sorry about that so yes guys that is that i hope this is um going to make more sense to you as you prepare for your final exams in your engineering science and two don't miss any question on heat it is something that you can do without any struggles know your definitions as well as the calculations follow some simple strategies use the uh, the first video and this video you'll find that i in a way summarized most of the common questions that they bring we have come to the end of our lesson thank you